Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. I bet you you were not expecting this. <laughs> um, I have been, it's kind of Mass Effect 3, it's kind of been haunting me a little bit that I haven't finished the playthrough uh, with, with Baldur's Gate and every, everything. Um, and I, I don't know, I've just been thinking about it more and thinking about Mass Effect more and I was like, you know what, I just want to play for a bit and I'm at my sister's place for a bit because I'm getting ready to go to Italy soon. Uh, for my second youngest sister's graduation gift I got her I've been saving for four years and we will be going to Italy and just doing a bunch of like just touring around Italy for fun and with backpacks and vibes you know what I mean um, so I'm trying to get game footage recorded and edited before I go we'll see if that happens I have a pretty good amount of Baldur's Gate uh, content but honestly I just want to break <laughs> for a bit and I'll play something else and what I really want to play is Mass Effect right now. So uh, I just watched my last video um, on Baldur's Gate, or sorry, uh, Mass Effect words. I'm trying to press J to find the journal but that's not how you do it um, <laughs> in this game. So I watched it, we just dropped off a bunch of stuff, we chatted with like Jacob and Samara, you know, people, the former companions. Um, and I think I had mentioned, I know I had mentioned, and I think what I was wanting to do next was Renok, which means we have to go to the Perseus Vale. The Quarian fleet offers both technical specialists and support ships to assist with the Crucible, potentially. Meet the Quarian admirals and obtain their help in the war effort. All of these, I think, will kind of get, like a lot of these are scanning missions, right? This is very much at the ultimate, we're getting to the point where these scanning missions really add up. Um, so yeah, and we have a couple of DLCs, which I'm always hesitant to do, but I think I don't want to do any DLCs until I have every companion. So we will get Tally, and Tally is the last one. Let's see, man, I'm also just playing with a mouse right now. Is this, I don't know how to do it. I'm playing with a mouse and keyboard, and I don't know how to do that very well, but it is a lot easier for me to aim with a mouse and keyboard. Whiz, so fast. Uh, speak with the Quarians. Yep, we have visit Anderson's apartment. That's our, um, that's the Citadel DLC. Cerberus spider base. I don't know, freaking now. Um, I don't know if I'll remember to edit that out, but I was gonna maybe try to change my settings because this, this, the freaking. And see, look, there's there's an invisible system. There's two. We have to jump through two invisible systems that we can't visit yet. Um, but this is really high sensitivity. Let's go. Stop stalling. Holy cow! That is so loud in my ears. I'm gonna need to like edit the volume down. I need to turn down the volume right now. Hey, Strum. The sun. Let's see. Oh, I don't think we can't just run into it, right? Like we gotta. Enter orbit. Gotha, a dwarf planet. Gotha has pressure cooker atmosphere that brings the surface temperature to scorching levels. Aha, uh -huh. there's been some speculation in the mining community as to whether the Quarians mined all the precious metals before they flooded the system some three centuries ago. Rumors abound that anyone willing to brave the Geth could find loads of naturally occurring diamonds on Gotha, but this is like, likely just a starship legend. I know diamonds are more, like, it's like diamonds are actually useful in, like, technical engineering and stuff like that. Um, just, like, engineering and stuff in general. Uh, from, like, computers, things like that. Um... But it is kind of funny, they're like, DIAMONDS! And I was like, mm-hmm, okay. <laughs> I don't think there's any point to scanning anything in this area, really. But we have Haystrom. Formerly a coin colony, Haystrom was established on to, to observe the phenomena on Dolan, the system's parent star. Dolan appeared to be unstable with a high possibility of erupting prematurely into a red giant. Haystrom was lost to the Geth in 1896 CE, soon after all communication from the planet and its attendant space stations ceased. That's a, that is an interesting year. Right before 1900, and like human years, right? Uh, the Geth have shown no signs of treating Dolan as threat. Pa over the past three centuries, beyond establishing several space stations near us. It's been a while. 
Dolan's magnetic eruptions and solar output overwhelm most nearby communications, and it is unclear how the Geth have compensated. Today, spry probe scans indicate extensive orbital construction around Haystrom, housing thousands of Geth platforms and an unknown number of Geth software mines. It is not known how many Geth are on the planet's surface, spy probe space interference from Dolan, making remote scanning difficult. Resource estimations based on Geth mining, refining, and fabricating practices suggest that the planet has at least 20 more years of use before it is exhausted. Intelligence experts speculate that the Geth have not exploited all of the resources because they wish to keep some in reserve for repairs. It's a Geth stronghold. All civilian traffic prohibited. Wait, this one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Charum. Mm -hmm. Once a starship refueling station for the Quarians, Charum has expanded under Geth rule. Thousands of orbital platforms surround the planet and its many moons, refining helium and helium-3. A vast Geth fleet travels between Charum and Haystrom, preventing all but the most stealthy of spy drones from discovering any information about it. Current estimates place the Geth fleet numbers between 5,000 and 10,000 ships with an unknown levels of armament. 5,000 and 10,000 is a lot. That's a, there's a big difference between the two. Anyway, this star is going crazy. Let's talk. I like to especially read the ones, like, read the planet entries that are, um, in, like, key plot areas. Yeah, Corian Envoy shit. This diplomatic frigate is, like, no Corian ship on record. It's holds relatively low temperature, and it appears to be venting heat in a manner similar to that of the Normandy when it comes out of stealth mode. How the Corians develop this high-tech vessel is unknown, but its hailing frequencies are open and welcoming messages are being typed being on to the Normandy. It's probably, I think it's because of Tally. After Tally's stint on the Normandy, she one of the things she brought back was, was, was technology information, which I can't blame her. Tally! Commander I know we're not going to see her yet. A pleasure to see you again. Though I wish it were under better circumstances. Yes! Run! I'd hope for your support in the fight against the Reapers. What's going on? Seventeen days ago, with precision strikes on four Geth systems, the Quarry what? initiated the war to retake <laughs> That's our already war, started? <laughs> which was a clear violation of our agreement with the Council to avoid provoking the Geth. A treaty violation is nothing compared to recovering our home world and advanced AI technology. You don't know. You can't. Are also, it's hilarious that the um, the admirals came onto my ship for this. It's like, really? <laughs> um, I can't believe she's just out here being like, yeah, we should get back AI technology. And, like, the freaking everybody else is like, absolutely not. Like, you know, like... The whole rest of the galaxy is like, literally, literally, literally can you not learn from the past, you know, but anyway. Your home world? You mean Renok? Correct, Commander. 300 years ago, we lost our world to our own AI creations, the Geth. After we attempted to kill them. We didn't try to kill them, Chorus. We tried to deactivate them. It wasn't murder. No, it was murder. <laughs> Commander, the Quarians never intended to create a true AI. It was an accident. Which you chose to correct by trying to kill Yeah. Them. Listen, I'm not on your side over there, you. Don't bother. Admitting we were wrong would undercut the justification for this suicidal... <laughs> of course, it's like, I have been doing this for, feels like, decades. <laughs> uh, let's see... You're throwing yourselves at the Geth? Again? And this time, we may have destroyed our people for good. We'd driven the Geth back to the home system when this signal began broadcasting to all the The Reapers ships. are invading! The Reapers. Under Reaper control, the Geth are significantly more effective. Our fleet is pinned in the home system. If we're going to win, we are... Win? You insisted on involving yeah. the civilian ships, Admiral Geralt. We need to retreat or we'll lose the life ships. Where's the signal coming from? Here. A Geth Dreadnought. It can outgun anything we've got and it's heavily defended. The Normandy stealth drive can get us in undetected. I could board, then disable the Reaper command signal. Yes. Cutting off the signal should throw the Geth into complete disarray. And while they're confused, you get to a mass relay and retreat. Good. Our civilian ships have seen too much fighting already. Are you certain you can disable the signal? We'll get you out of there safely, Admiral. Our newest Admiral has also Tully! <laughs> Tully Zora Vast Normandy, reporting for duty. 
Glad you could make it, Tally. Admirals, already a team to hit that dreadnought. Thank you, Commander. Also, it's hilarious that they left her for the end. <laughs> She's just standing there waiting in the wings. Admiral? Yeah! It's mostly a formality. I'm an expert on the Geth. That you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Yes, Tally! Tally's always been one of my favorites. If I'd known it was this bad, I would have come sooner. You've had your own troubles. I'm sorry about Earth. We've got the largest fleet in the galaxy. If you can help us, we'll hit the Reapers with everything we've got. Or however much is left from this stupid war. I thought you'd support the invasion. No. After talking to Legion, I thought maybe there was a chance for Which peace. Which is different. So why help them? I'm an admiral. People look to me for guidance. Public disagreement would divide the fleet. I'll get your people out of here safely, Tally. Thanks, Shepard. And just so you know, I need to keep things strictly business in front of the Admirals. If you'd like to catch up, let's talk somewhere private. Sure thing. She never really wanted this. I remember being, like, happy for I'm her. I'm ready to hit that dreadnought whenever you are. But, I'll, like, not really happy. I was always like, well, this seems... Like, I don't know. I never really pegged her for an admiral you know she's she's more of a free flying goes wherever she needs to kind of individual and like yeah she has like you know her dad's legacy and everything but i always felt like she was trying to be her own person and and i never really liked how they shoehorned her into an admiralty position in the game how the, how the writers like shoehorned her into that which i could see it happening right like, i don't think it's necessarily bad writing just like the situation shoehorned her in. And she does feel a great obligation for her people, but I always saw her more as like a, like a tactical, like, like in and out, like kind of a scouting ship of a person, you know? Like, I don't know, like going where she's needed, not, not sitting on an admiralty board or anything. So, yeah. Oop. I'm just trying to look at my journal, make sure we're good. And this is just why well, I think they started the fight before the Reapers came in, but still, it's like, and I, I it just like, like, I don't know, you don't just get to start a war with the only, like, massive AI, really, that we have in the galaxy that could, like, destroy everything, you know, which is what everybody's afraid of. And, like, the freaking council would be livid. And, like, everybody, nobody would help the Quarians with this. They'd be like, like, things have been fine. Just leave them alone. But I also get it, right? They're like, we want our homeworld back. And they've been divided on this for, for centuries at this point, whether they're not to go back or not. And they finally, they've, they've, the, the, the Admiralty Board was, like, tipped in favor of doing it for different reasons. But they were all most of like they the majority of them were tipped in favor of doing it but the fact that they involved the live ships to me is like i know they did it for supplies and like you know, supply like keeping the supply lines like super short because they're right there but involving civilians in this is insane and she's like we have the largest fleet in the galaxy i'm like yeah full of kids you know and like uh, civilian people like all of them are capable to some degree but like it's it's a it's it's basically like a like giant like, giant floating space station with some, like, military, like, segments. Like, I just, it's not a military thing. And I'm just like, I mean, they, they, they do structure themselves militarily, but still. Like, I don't know, it's just, I don't like that at all. And I do, I do hope, I would hope anyway, that, like, this, any civilian ships I didn't want to could have voted, right? And been like, nah, bruh, <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> Travel to the Korean home system... Alrighty, let's do this. Okay, hold on first. I need to see if I can fix this. Alright, I turned the camera sensitivity down. And I turned the, uh, just the mouse sensitivity down as well. I don't think I have any... Nope. I don't think I have anything to say to anybody right now. That's the problem with it being so long, is I'm like, have I done my walk around with people? I think I have. I'm just gonna go. It's time to go. Oh, this one's still really... <laughs> Disable the dreadnought. As an admiral, 
camera. Like you can disagree too. Like like Talia's like I have to agree with everyone. I also feel like she's a, she's still a tiny bit too young for this, right? Where she's like she thinks too much. Like I mean, she's got the political mind in some ways. Where she's like, oh, I don't want us to be like divided because I want the the people to not feel divided. And I'm like, no, that's the point of having like a small group is that like you have different ideas and like you bring that to the board, right? You know, or to the table, you know, and like she needs to like say what she thinks is important and they can disagree behind closed doors but they should be aware of her instead of just her being like oh yeah i'm just here as a formality like no stick up for yourself Addis is marginally warmer than Rennick, despite being further from its sun. Volcanic activity spews methane into Addis's atmosphere, and this haze retains heat in the greenhouse effect. Historically, the Gorians used Geth to mine the planet, and when the Geth rebelled, the small Gorian population on and around Addis was quickly overrun. It is clear that the Gorian armada has not forgotten or for forgiven. The remains of Geth space stations litter Addis's orbit, now all shrapnel infused metal. The Normandy sensors pick up a strange croaky sound, probably some kind of distress call from Geth survivors left floating in space, condemned to the eternal cold. Well, well, it's a good thing they don't feel cold, uh, but thanks for trying to make me feel really terrible about it. Which I do feel terrible about it. Like, that is a horrifying ex I don't care who you are. Like, you're being left to- especially the Geth, right? They're, they're designed to be with others, you know? You could say humans are too, really. So, like, being left in a void all alone is, like, a horrifying existence. Caddy has low gravity for a planet of its size, which proved a significant boon to early quarry and explorers. Even before the discovery of Mass Effect technology, it was easy to extract Caddy's resources. When the Gorians made first contact with the Citadel species and gained access to Izo, profits rose and the orbital stations became a beehive of activity. Today, Kari's Lagrange points are littered with space junk, including pieces of a Geth orbital station that must have massed at least half a billion tons. This station could have generated impressive kinetic barriers, but even these appear to have been insufficient against the Gorians' attacks. Well, you can't say that they didn't, that they're not, like, you know, being thorough about things we have here. We have the migrant fleet, we have a Geth debris field, and a Geth dreadnought. Although its orange sun is only about 90% the mass of Sol and half as luminous, Ranak, as I'm going to say, this planet is very close to be a water world, being it's very close to the sun. Ranok is arid by Earth standards and because it has formed close to its star and has slightly less ocean coverage. Photosynthetic life is concentrated around rivers and oceans with large expanses of desert in between. The importance of plant life and shade in ancient Quarian culture is evident in the translation of Ranok's name, Walled Garden. That's beautiful. To a starship sensors, the most obvious feature of the Quarian homeworld is the numerous heat sources in orbit. Thousands of Geth space stations watch over the planet. Somewhere in this artificial form of construction lurks the Geth, Ar Geth Armada, waiting for its moment to counterattack. Population unknown. Quarian estimates on the number of Geth range from tens of millions to the single digit billions. Estimate on the number of Geth consciousnesses stored in ser servers are far higher. What else we got? No. Did I look at? I looked at this one. Oh, there's that one over there. I looked at Addis. I looked at Caddy. You gotta go over here. How's it? Hazen, ice giant, composed primarily of hydrogen and helium, is colored with striking aquamarine because of small concentrations of methane. This would be cool. Water, ice, and ammonia. Its relatively small size is a curiosity of human astronomers who would have expected a larger hydrogen helium gas giant to have accreted during this horse's misformation. The Gorians have driven the Geth away from the planet's helium-3 fueling machinery, but it is clear the Geth put up a fight. Wreckage from Corian fighters litter the area, and more than one refueling station appears to have been blown apart by kinetic impacts and a scorched earth attack. Do we be scanning here or? Okay. Migrant fleet. Look at him. Flotilla of 500, 500, 50,000, 500,000, 50,000 craft holding over 17 million coins. The migrant fleet is the largest array of space bearing vessels in the known galaxy. Yeah, space bearing vessels, it's not a. It's not a military operation. It's a testament to the core and strategic skill that these numbers have not dropped significantly during recent battles. The fleet's now on the far side of the star from Ranak, the better to cloak its movements from the Geth. Meow. Geth debris field. 
Close to the star, the Normandy scanners can detect a high and nigh uncountable number of Geth satellites, satellites that use solar sails to self-correct their position. The Geth place the ultra-lightweight constructions around the sun to collect energy arranged in a vast array known as a Dyson bubble. Scattered among them are space stations and servers that draw power from the satellites through wireless energy transfer. Most of the space stations are wreckage now. No small, small number of solar sails have also been destroyed. It appears that the Quarians began to destroy them, but attack was stopped before the attack was complete. All right. Did I do this one? Yeah, right now. <laughs> Alright, Geth Dreadnought. Friggin... I, I just think it's hilarious that we're like, No, yeah, this is a good idea. No, it's, def it's definitely a good idea to hop on into something that... And I know last time we were in a Geth thing, oftentimes in the Geth strongholds themselves, they don't have a lot of their units up in operation. The Geth servers are like, they're all in the servers. Not as many are out and about in like actual machinery like walking machinery you know scans of the geth dreadnought but still it's still really dumb to go in there orbiting ranok reveal an intimidating array of features from an improved main gun and ultraviolet anti-ship lasers to increase their output the geth workforce never demands rest wages or autonomy and then they create well they do demand autonomy that was the whole reason they rebelled was because they wanted autonomy <laughs> Uh, the Geth workforce, no, yeah, and the creation of their flagship, they were limited only by time and raw materials. The damage inflicted by the Corian fleet appears minor at best. To be fair, they would not need rest or wages as such, right? Like, they don't have, the, the, the Geth provide for each other, and what they need is limited, you know? Um, so they, but it's like a community hive mind, sort of, where, like, everybody works for the benefit of the Geth, you know? Um... Oh, yeah, we totes got time to start this. Totes got time. Oh, my gosh. Who do we... Yeah, we have to bring Tally. Hmm. Who else do I want to bring? I'm a vanguard. Get ready for me to suck at combat, by the way. Uh, we, we, well, we should bring Caden or Garrus. Somebody that she's familiar with. Also, I will... I don't know if we get to see Tally's face in this, but I will be getting a mod, hopefully, for her face. Um, I did also have my, my to-do list from, uh, like, eight months ago, which was the last time that I played this, was when I was working in California. It was kind of wild to watch that video a little bit. Um, pew, pew, pew. I, I, on my Mass Effect 3 missions, uh, list, the, like, one of the only, like, things that's not about missions is Tally Face Mod. Oh, phone calls. Okay, so. We want to bring... I think I want to bring... <gasps> I do want to bring Garrus, maybe, because... I think it just happens as long as you play, like, slow enough. But Garrus and Tally hook up... Hit, hitch? Hook up and hitch. It was like... I was trying to say that. I'm like, hick up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if nobody else makes me laugh, I make me laugh. So there. Ooh, and he, yeah, no, no. We, we bring Garrus. We bring Garrus. We bring Garrus on these. Do I care about any of these things? No. Just want to be able to use my powers. I got a six shotgun. Uh, is the pistol? The pistol might be not great for me. Let's see what Tally has. The katana and the predator. I mean, I don't care. Sure. Sure. I have heard also uh, someone was. I actually just met up with somebody like at work, right? Who like he saw my N7 logo on my car and like my. Joker is my co-pilot license plate cover and was like oh I saw that and I was like yo buckle up buckaroo we talked for like I don't know two and a half hours it was really funny just at work chilling by the wi-fi machine and uh what was I thinking oh he was telling me that apparently you can like spec Garrus to be absolutely broken with like arm like certain like a certain loadout and like armor shredding mods and stuff like that and I'm like that's a that's a lot of work not really it sounded really awesome but 
I'll just keep playing with what I got, honestly. We'll see. We'll see how it treats me. Wow. Level 53. I am rolling in points. Holy moly. Oh, Tally's got a good bazillion. Oh, I think I'm wearing the dragon, not the dragon age armor, but the uh, medieval armor. Sick. Oh, boy. I do love her combat drone. <laughs> it's, it's like a shock thing that you can just put freaking missiles on it. Uh, I think I'm gonna do that because I think it's hilarious. Since it's a defense one, I don't necessarily want it to have, like, it doesn't necessarily need, like, a super beefed up, like, power. But I'm gonna increase its duration, increase its attack rate, right? Which is always really nice, even if it's with low damage. Get a 30% chance to knock down an electrocuted enemy or damage up to two additional nearby targets. Let's see. Get the upgrade on potentially knocking something down. Alright, I will give her I will give her the synthetic. I fully upgraded some things, but I should probably upgrade fully upgrade her Quarian Machinist too. It will increase her recharge speed. I always do that people that are focused on their abilities. Increase tech power, damage, recharge speed. Squad mice tech powers, eh. Let's do that one. Increase the recharge speed of drone powers. And we have the drone fully upgraded anyway. So. Let's see. For me, do I want to upgrade? Maybe I'll just do cryo. Why not? I don't. I can't really think of a reason to not. Oh, pull. Dang. <laughs> oh, well. Having these be at least up to three is always good. Anyway. Get this started. Oh my We're gosh. The Corian home system. ETA to Rannoch 5. I look so cool. What you got from the convoys? Look how cool. Pretty much a big old shitstorm. Thank you, there. Joker. <laughs> I miss you. I've detected several hundred unique ship creatures <laughs> engaged in active combat. Yeah, like I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take us in, Joker. I believe in you. Stealth drive engaged. Only way they'll detect us is if you all start singing the Russian national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, I am hilarious. Whoa! I didn't know they were mid combat. This is sick! They look so good! These, these, these battles now look so cool! My cyber warfare suite has accessed the docking protocols. Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh! Pew pew pew! The pew pews! I thought they weren't actively engaged right now. I thought they were hiding. Right. Once we're aboard, we find whatever's broadcasting the Reaper signal and shut it down. Tally's our expert on guest software. She'll be handling hacking and security. Good to have you back. Yeah! And maybe with another Dextro aboard, they'll get better Turian. Yeah! <laughs> As long as it's sterilized. Dr. Michelle did get me some dextro amino chocolate. You're welcome to it once we're back. Oh. She got you Turian chocolate? Yeah. She said she saw it and thought of me. Wurple! Look at him! Nothing. Shadow, <laughs> there's a problem. All teams except the one. <laughs> I see the free one. Pretty torn up, though. Too risky for the whole team. I'll secure the docking area. Everyone else can follow me over. Roger that, Commander. We'll just stay here. You know, quietly. Hang tight. It'll just be a minute. Oh, I love the interactions between the former squad mates. And, oh, that's so funny. The, the Dextro Amino Chocolate thing comes up again later. And it's, really, it's really funny. I believe. Jump, Shepard. Jump. I don't, how do you jump? I don't actually know. Why do I do this by myself? Ooh! <gasps> there is no up and down. There is only artificial gravity. I see. This is why we're doing it. Okay, okay, okay. I'm 
glad I did that, otherwise we're gonna be sitting there trying to figure out how to jump. Oh, what? Oh, let me see. No wonder the quarians were having trouble. That ship is enormous. Also, you put me right in the glare. It is? Is this one of their new ones? I mean, Legion has come back and brought information as well, so... Are we... Okay. Also, uh, these noises I'm hearing, I wouldn't hear anything. The void. Okay, that's my feet. Never mind. I thought I was hearing explosions. I would probably hear my feet. Tally, you're gonna like the view. Better than a vid? Much. Wow. I mean, you say that, but like, is that, you know... I guess Rannoch isn't being invaded by the Reapers because it's Geth. Um, but I still wouldn't expect to see those lights and stuff. Come on, I believe. See that? That wasn't me. I don't think I would hear that even if there was shenanigans going on in the tube. Because we're in a void. How are you doing, Shepard? The lack of gravity is a little disorienting. Mm -hmm. The dreadnought has artificial gravity. You should be okay once you're on. I guess I'm not doing artificial gravity. Until then I'll make do with magnets. Yeah, I'm not. Hey, take your time, Commander. We're fine until they, you know, look out a window. Listen, I'm doing my. Geth don't use windows. Or ah, yeah. That's, that's right. The Geth are just sitting there saying those organics would never try the no windows thing twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, those organics would never try the no windows thing twice. <laughs> oh, that's why Joker's on my license plate. He really does. He does make me laugh. He's a hoot and holler. Oh, well, this is flashbacks to two. Sort of. Looks like the rest of the team isn't using the docking tube. So I'm guessing you'd rather not solo the dread. I look so sick, though. Not if I can help it. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Tally to get on the dreadnought schematic. But not that good. I'm so cool. Let me at another docking tube. I'll override the controls and let the boarding party on. I am so. Shepard is so cool, you guys. Like it's been so long, and Shepard's always cool. But it's just nice to see it again. The only bummer is that my mod, where Shepard's like super beefy, is uh, doesn't work in the armors. Um, but this armor kind of makes up for it by being bulky and cool looking. <laughs> well, you can't see how noodly her arms are. Her in this. How do I? Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> How do I act? Oh, there they are. There's the abilities. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Let's see. What do I have? I'll do cryo armor. Or, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, that's pull. That's hit people with my face. Can I, like, change those around somehow? Okay, I can change them, but I am actually going to call this one here. That's probably a little long. But I at least wanted to get on to the Geth Dreadnought. So... Anyway, also remember, it has been a long time since I've played this game. I've only played this game through once, so I'm probably going to make mistakes. I don't know. I just feel the need to, like, make sure that people know as much as it might seem like I know things. I often forget things in these games as much as I love them, so... Which is always kind of a nice treat for me. I'm like, oh my gosh! <laughs> but, um, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, welcome back to Mass Effect. I don't know how long these videos will be going, or, like, how long I'll be able to upload these interspersed with Baldur's Gate. But, um, for now, I'm happy to be back. I'm always happy to be back to Mass Effect, I want to say. I never, there's, that's not a game I ever need to break from. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Aquin tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fane, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galita, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. I very much appreciate it as well. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my fo forest tier patron. I always hiccup at the end in the, in the Patreon stuff. Um,. But yes, thank you so, so much for your support. You've gone above and beyond in your support of me and the channel. And I cannot thank you enough. So thank you all again, and I hope to see you in the next one.